The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. Well, the sun has broken through what was a very cloudy and sometimes rainy day in Cincinnati, and we welcome you to Great American Ballpark. Game three of this four-game series between the Reds and the Giants, and the Reds looking for their first win in the series. They've been tightly played, if you will. A one-run spread in game one, a three-run spread in game two, and these two teams know all about that. 42 games decided by three runs or less this year for the Giants, only one less for the Reds. Will there be another here tonight? Hi again, everybody. Alongside Chris Welsh, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. We talked at the beginning of this series, Giants pitching Chris so good, and yet another tough customer to deal with tonight in left-hander Jonathan Sanchez. Well, it's been a couple of years since the Reds have seen Jonathan Sanchez, but I'll tell you what, he's just gotten better, not worse, over the last couple of years. Don't be misled by that even 504-4 record for Sanchez. 2.63 earned run average. This guy's unbelievable against the Reds. Last time he faced him, he struck out 10. And he's a tough, hard-throwing left-hander. You're going to see easy gas about 94 to 96. Doesn't even look like he's trying to throw hard. First couple of innings, you're going to see a lot of foul backs like the Reds aren't getting around fast enough. Aaron Harang, it's time for him to put some zeros on the board. 12 starts, 4 and 6 this year. Pitching a little bit better, but boy, do the Reds need him right now. And generally, Aaron Harang is a guy who will make his defense work behind him, and the Reds all year long, Chris, have played outstanding defensive baseball. Well, those are two fly balls you saw right there. If Aaron Harang can get a ground ball double play, that would be huge because he doesn't get too many ground balls. But the Reds are up to it. They are a very an athletic team. They throw ahead of the runner. They cut down base runners, and they play hard. That's a combination that helps your pitching so tremendously because, you know, pitching and defense are so intertwined. The numbers simply don't lie. Only the Giants have a higher fielding percentage than the Reds among National League teams this year. And look at that. Fewest unearned runs allowed. That's what we're talking about right there. If you don't give up unearned runs, they count just like earned runs, and you're going to have a lot better overall percentage. Your winning percentage will be better. You won't be pitching out of the stretch as much. You don't give extra outs. All the things that consider that you make your pitching staff better has to do with defense. Jay Bruce will be in the lineup again against the left-hander. He was mighty good against Barry Zito the other night. We'll talk more about that when we return. Clearing tonight. For
exhibited in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Our telecast of Reds baseball tonight and every night on Fox Sports Ohio presented in beautiful high definition television courtesy of H.H. Gray. Very dark, dreary day today in Cincinnati. It's turned into a beautiful night, at least, closing in on 10 minutes after 7. How about the rest of the night from Tim Hedrick? Good evening, everybody. Rain has pushed out of the area. That means it's going to be a pretty nice night down at the old ball yard. Gradual clearing tonight from 74 down to about 69. We need a win. We need a win big. Have a good game, everybody. All right, Tim, Reds need a win, and Jay Bruce wants to do what he did against Barry Zito the other night. You know, I'm wondering if maybe this is the turning point for Jay Bruce as far as being a major leaguer. Tough left-hander, he hangs in there, rips a double to left, and then a home run off a curveball. That's a patented Barry Zito curveball. Slices another one to left field, picks up three hits against a former Cy Young Award winner. Pretty nice job for Jay Bruce in that, you know. Once he starts learning to hang in there against left-handers, it'll become so much easier against right-handers. And there you see his splits, Chris. I know you pay a lot of attention to those numbers throughout his career. Those are this season. Uh, obviously, very good. If he's hitting left-handers at a 269 clip, that is way better. That's about 80 points better than he did up until this time as a young major leaguer. So, Jay Bruce, little by little, he is getting it. And you said all along that he would hit left-handers one day. All right, Aaron Horan. Big fella trying to get it rolling tonight and get the Reds a much-needed win. Tonight's game on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Ford F-Series trucks, the best-selling trucks, 33 straight years. By Just for Men for Mustache and Beard, keep your edge. And by Skyline Chili, you know it's Skyline time when you get that craving for a Skyline three-way or cheese coatings. Well, we are ready to roll tonight at Great American Ballpark. The Reds have taken a field. Aaron Harang, four up, five down on the year. An ERA just under five and a half making his 13th start of the year. Giants have won the first two games of this series. Coming from behind to win 6-5 in the opener and too much Matt Cain last night, a complete game seven hit shutout in a 3-0 San Francisco win. Ball one to Andres Torres, and we're underway. Scout report on Aaron Harang. You've seen him before. He's got good control, doesn't walk too many. He's a fly ball pitcher, but still, he needs to hit his spots. I mean, hits that outside corner to lefties and right-handers. makes it a lot easier when you can do that. Aaron Harang coming off his shortest start of the season, a no decision in a 4-2 loss at D.C. Friday night. He starts off Torres 3-0. In four innings, 
Arang allowed eight hits, two runs, and threw 98 pitches in those four innings. And that's very un Aaron Harang like. Straight away center field, and after falling behind 3 0, Harang will get the out on Torres. And Stubbs has to battle that bright sunshine in straightaway center. Same two for Johnny Gomes in left. We take a look at the Giants batting order presented by Remke Big. Sanchez coming up, Sandoval at third. Aubrey Huff, the cleanup hitter. Juan Uribe at short. And Pat Burr, good numbers in his career against Aaron Harang again in left. A ladder third of Buster Posey, the first baseman. Eli Whiteside behind the plate. And Jonathan Sanchez on the mound. Freddy Sanchez, a 362 batter, playing in his 20th game of the year since coming back from shoulder surgery. And Orang ahead of him at 0 and 2. Tough to see right now. Tough to see for the center fielder. You saw Stubbs battling it. Tough to see for the hitter. When those, when those clouds moved out and that sun came out, boy, this batter's eye right here. It looks pretty. It's a nice boathouse. Great place to watch a game before the sun is right in your eyes there. Roller hook down to Roland and quickly two away for Harang in the first inning. Take a look at the red zone defense presented by Ford. Gomes and left. Drew Stubbs back in the lineup in center. Jay Bruce in right. Again, it's Roland Cabrera. Phillips Votto along the infield. Harang and Corky Miller. The battery tonight. One more game to go in this series, an afternoon tilt, 12.35 tomorrow. A reminder, plenty of tickets are available for that game tomorrow. No television tomorrow. So the game will be broadcast, of course, like every game on the Reds' radio network. Ball one to Sandoval. And if you haven't seen Mike Leak yet, he is pitching the day game tomorrow. He'll go into that start with a 5-0 record and a 2.22 earn run average. 2 0 on Sandoval. Fly ball, center field. Stubbs is there, inning over. Good start for Aaron Horan. Throws it down in order. Reds come to bat for the first time when we return. Dusty Baker starting lineup tonight. Brought to you by Remke Biggs. Orlando Cabrera leads off at short. Brandon Phillips at second. Joey Votto at first. Scott Rowland, a cleanup hitter, the third baseman. Johnny Gomes in left. Jay Bruce in right. A ladder third of Drew Stubbs, the center fielder. Corky Miller catching Aaron Horan. Jonathan Sanchez has developed into a very fine. Starting pitcher for the Giants. He's got a great arm, no question about that. Kind of a low three-quarter arm delivery. Some people call that almost sidearm, but he'll throw a easy fastball, 92 to 94, 95 miles an hour. But you can run on him. He has given up 12 stolen bases on the year. So if the Reds can get some runners on, they can push the running game. 
Very impressive batting average against. How about 183? Wow. Sanchez, 27 years young, grew up in Puerto Rico. Originally came up with the Giants in 06, primarily out of the bullpen, again in 07 with an ERA of almost six. I mean, I recall like it was yesterday, people wanting to throw in the towel on Sanchez. And even the following year, he went 9 and 12 going back into their rotation with an ERA of five. But then last year, cut that by three quarters of a run per nine innings. Went 8 and 12 and off to the best start of his major league career this year. Two and two on Cabrera. Where Sanchez a season ago threw a no hitter. The 13th no hitter in Giants franchise history, the fifth in the San Francisco era. That came on July the 10th against San Diego. There's a bouncer through the hole in the left field, a base hit for Cabrera. On defense, the Giants shape up this way, presented by Ford. Burl Torres Huff in the outfield, left, center, and right. Uribe and Sanchez, the middle infield, Sandoval and Posey on the corners. Sanchez and Eli Whiteside, third different starting catcher we've seen in the first three games of this series. Saw Posey back there in game one. Benji Molina last night and Whiteside tonight. Brandon Phillips right now, the hottest hitter in the Reds lineup. No two ways about that. Had three more hits last night, extending his hitting streak to a season high 11 consecutive games. In fact, it's the longest by any Red this year. And during the streak, Phillips a 429 batter. Jack swing roller. Sanchez will come out and throw out Phillips. But Cabrera advances into scoring position. One out. That has the effect of a sacrifice bun right there. You can't really complain about that. Brandon Phillips over a 300 hitter against left handers this year, but you know, wanted to swing the bat. But you get the runner at, at second base. Now you got Joey Votto coming up. Maybe Scott Rowland. Somebody could drive him in, put you a run on the board early. Well, a great job by uh, Jeff Pecoro and Jim Day during Red's Live tonight in their conversation, their interview with Walt Jockety. It was so exciting hearing him talk about Edinson Volquez. And for those of you that did not hear the news, as Joey Votto digs in with a runner at second and one out and takes up an in, Edinson Volquez will make a rehab start this Saturday night for Class A Lynchburg against Potomac. Coming all the way back, it'll be his first start since undergoing Tommy John elbow surgery on August the 3rd last summer. Looking forward to hearing about how he does. And if all goes well, you heard Walt talk about it. The idea is to build him up, build him up, build him up pitch count wise, get him up over 100, and then into the Reds rotation more than likely in July. That sounded like great news. I mean, he's got to be way ahead of schedule, right? No doubt about it. Two and one Nevada. During the Reds' last home stand, he was up here for about three or four days through through bat not through batting practice, but through his bullpen sessions in the morning and the Reds brass wowed. He looked good too. Looked in good shape. He's been working out hard. Working under the tutelage of Tom Browning down there for the most part in good year. He'll get you in shape. Oh yeah. On the inside corner at strike two Nevada now. Orlando Cabrera, more than any other Red, the Reds are tied for the most steals of third base among all teams in Major League Baseball with nine of them. And Cabrera has four of the nine. Obato fooled badly on that pitch and rolls out to the mound and staying put Cabrera. Obato still without a hit. In this series, 
Well, with two strikes, you wouldn't normally see Joey Votto do this, except with two strikes, I should say. He's just trying to cover every pitch all over the place. That's a fastball that just eats him up inside. You know, they have scatter reports on hitters that say you've got a strength in one part of the zone and a weakness in another part of the zone. One of the traps that hitters get into during a slump is trying to cover the entire strike zone. Tough to do. Nothing in one is Scott Rowland. Easy gas. Rolling a 293 batter, 14 home runs, 40 runs driven in. He has Cabrera at second with two away here in the Reds' first inning of a scoreless game. Apparently, all that rain we had overnight last night has made its way to the eastern seaboard. Rain delays tonight in Philadelphia and in New York. St. Louis lost again last night in Los Angeles. one nothing the final in that game. So the Reds and the Cardinals again enter play on this June the 9th, 2010 in a first place tie in the National League Central. And next in line would be the Cubs six and a half back. Really, the rest of the division has been quite fortunate that over the last week and a half, the Reds and the Cardinals have hit a slump for the first time in really a month and a half. And it's kept teams like the Cubs and like Milwaukee believing they have a chance to get back in this race. I mean, otherwise, those teams could easily be the Cubs, for example, instead of six and a half. They could be nine and a half, right. ten right now. Mm -hmm. Hammered in the left field by Roland, and the Reds will get on the board in the first inning. 41 runs batted in for Roland. That's his 15th double, and a 1 0 lead in the first. By how immense has Scott Roland been this year? That's a little bit of a slider, it looks like. May have been a cutter. That he just got, kind of got over and just rolled it into the middle of the plate. But Scott Rollo was there to whack it down the left field line. And with two outs and a runners to score in position, the Reds continue to lead the world. Maybe not leading the world. Actually, they're just second in the National League, but it's pretty close. No, they're first in the National League, second in the Major League, second only to Boston. Oh, with two out, you're right. And there a strike to Johnny Gomes. Johnny seven home runs, 37 runs batted in, a 297 batter. Gomes not in the lineup last night against Matt Kane. Lance Nix got the start. Fastball jammed him. And that ball is in the mid. A nice play by Eli Whiteside. Well, that's a nice play right there. And this looked nice too. RBI double by Scott Rowland, 1 0 Reds.
<laughs> I mean, the numbers are just beyond belief. You see the one home run. That is the only run that Arthur Rhodes has allowed all year. That's it. You know what? I don't know if this is any coincidence to this, but Arthur Rhodes is the first to the ballpark every day. Nobody beats him here. No other player anyway. Some coaches have to come in because they've got meetings. Arthur's here at 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the afternoon, getting his game face ready. A veteran that takes it seriously. That was in the fifth Reds game of the season. They opened the year against St. Louis. They won the first game that weekend over the Cubs five to four. The next day the Reds lost four to three. And that was on the pinch hit home run by Jeff Baker in the eighth inning off Arthur Rhodes. The only run he has given up this entire year. And of course ever since then he's gone 23 and a third scoreless innings consecutively. Fouled away by Aubrey Huff. And uh, we talk about it all the time. The only run he allows is a home run. And he got a loss by getting up the home run. That broke a 3 3 time. Slow roller, right side, handled by Votto. One away. Four up, four down to begin the night for Aaron Harang, and now Juan Uribe. He's been there. Leading run producer so far this year, 38 runs batted in. He's knocked in five in the first two games of this series. Phillips bare hands and throws him out at first base. Wow. Uh, usually they recommend only the bare hand for balls that are rolling very slowly or stop. But Brandon Phillips coming across the bag right there has got to negotiate the bag, pick it up barehanded, and fire at the first base. I mean, he makes that look a whole lot easier than it really is. And you know, after watching it again, I'm not sure if he gloves that ball, reaches in and throws, if he throws out your eBay. You're right. I think you're right. Now Pat Burke, 5 of 12 since being brought up from the AAA level, began the year with Tampa Bay, was released by the Rays. Giants took a flyer on him, and so far so good. Five hits in his first 12 at bats. He's tickled to death to be with the Giants, get another chance, and be able to play the outfield. Tell me before batting practice that it, it really sickened him not to be able to fall into the role that they have for him in Tampa Bay. That it just didn't work out for one reason or another. He goes, even to this day, I'm not sure why I couldn't do it. But it's all on Pat Burrell. He knows that. But he's just happy to have another shot at it. Say, I'm not sure there are a whole lot of players that have the thick skin of Pat Burrell. You play in Philadelphia, man. I mean, when you're going good, you're the king of the hill. But when you're getting, you know, offers every night, and misplaying a ball here or there, and the team's going bad, and he had a few of those years, too. Well, they, those were not easy years. Well, that's a crowd that'll pelt Santa Claus with snowballs. That's right. And there's a walk to Pat Burrow. Of course, the Reds got it done on a Scott Rowland double in the first. Every RBI this year means another $25 from Shakely for the Reds Community Fund. Shakely, it's done. First base runner of the game for the Giants against Aaron Harang. A two out walk. And there's a long fly ball into left center field. And the Giants lead it two to one. That is into the second deck in left center field. And for Aaron Harang, that is now 12 home runs 
in 70 innings he is allowed. I'll tell you what, when the Giants hit home runs here, they're not cheapies. This is the second time in this series that they've had a player that reach the second deck. A first pitch get ahead curveball right there, and Buster Posey is all over it. And of course, that comes on the heels of a two out walk. After Harang retired the first five batters of the game. So here is Eli Whiteside. Whiteside doesn't get a ton of playing time, but man, when he gets it, he's made the most of it. He's already hit four home runs and has five doubles. Yeah, they like what he's done behind the plate when they give Benji Molina a breather. I mean, the, the Giants have come in here now. They started three different catchers in the first three games of the series. How many teams do you know that can do that? Bruce Bochy, former catcher. Maybe he wants to surround himself with him. Of course, Posey's playing first base tonight. He caught last night, or he caught the first night when Barry Zito pitched. Mm -hmm. Fly ball shallow right Phillips going out will give way to Bruce and the inning is over but a long two run home run by Posey his first of the season gives the Giants a two to one lead. Well, after jumping ahead 1-0, the Reds fall behind 2-1 on the two-run blast by that young man, Buster Posey. Reds will send up Jay Bruce, Bruce Dubs, Corky Miller against Jonathan Sanchez in the second inning. Talked about Bruce before the game started. Three hits against left-hander Barry Zito. In the opening game of this series, Chris, but they are very different left-handers, Zito and Sanchez. Well, there's no question about it. Zito is kind of a slow, curveballing left-hander, and Sanchez just has one of these gifted arms. I mean, it's amazing. There's Barry Zito, but it's amazing to look back. And Sanchez must have he must have grown his fastball since the time that he was drafted because he was taken in the 27th round. Hard hit ball. Posey will feed Sanchez in time. Out of Ohio Dominican College. Sanchez did. He went there from Puerto Rico. 
And that was the same year, the 2004 draft, the same year the Reds took, took Homer Bailey in the first round. And for those of you wondering about Ohio Dominican, it's in Columbus, Ohio. Ohio Dominican College is a, a prolific four-year NAIA baseball program. And boy, what a career he had there. He authored four no-hitters during his collegiate career. How do you do that and last until the 27th round? That is a very good question. One to Drew Stubbs. A ball to strike. Drew back in the lineup tonight. Gave way to fellow rookie Chris Heisey last night. Heisey went 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. One and two to Stubbs. Kansas City comes rolling in over the weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. And then after an off day Monday, it's the Dodgers at Great American Ballpark already for the second time this year. It's hard to believe, isn't it? The Reds have not played at Milwaukee, yeah. a Central Division foe. Yet they will host the Dodgers for a second three-game series in the first two months. Strike three to Stubbs. First strike out of the night for Sanchez. And of course, on Friday night, it's another post game fireworks Friday show presented by Assurance Health. That'll be right after the Reds and the Royals for tickets. Call well, area code 513 381 REDS. 381 Reds or go to Reds.com. Look forward to seeing you here on Friday night. Corky Miller looks for his first hit since being brought up from the minor leagues to replace the injured Ryan Hannigan. Oh, first, first six. Two and one to Corky Miller. People have asked this before, but Corky is his given name. Signed by the Reds as a non-drafted free agent back on June the 5th, 1998. And here he is 13 baseball seasons later. Three balls, two strikes on Miller. For the Reds, in 01 for 17 games, 39 games in 02, 14 games in 03, only 13 in 04. Spent time with Minnesota, one game for Boston in 06. Parts of two years with Atlanta, the White Sox last year, and back with the Reds again at the end of last season. Well, uh, you know, it just goes to show you that if you're a good handler of pitchers, you work hard, you come early, you accept the role of sitting on the bench, and you can catch and throw a little bit. It doesn't really matter what you hit lifetime, you can etch yourself out a very nice career as a major league catcher. Breaking ball strike three to win the inning. Red's gone in order. We play two and the Giants lead two to one.
legendary performance. He won the game. Yeah, that's going back. Yes, sir. That's going to be gone. As Ken Griffey Jr. delivers home run number 600 for his career. Just two years ago, Ken Griffey Jr. is 600th career home run. Had it for you right here on Fox Sports Ohio. George Grand on the call of that grand home run. Who knows? George might be watching right now. Might be. Hope you're doing all right, George. We miss seeing you. We certainly do. I think he's like, liking his life pretty much right now. Retired in the environs of the Northeast. Well, I sure hope so. I know everybody else around here hopes so as well. Got a new grandbaby to dote over. And you know he's doing a whole bunch of that. You better believe it. Pitcher against pitcher to begin the giant third. A two run home run by Buster Posey. He's given the Giants a two to one lead. There are some cheapies hit in this ballpark. That was not one of them. There's a laser off the bat of Sanchez right at Drew Stubbs, one away in the third. In fact, right now, I would imagine that Rob Butcher, or the media relations director, is compiling again another list of all those players that have hit the second deck here. One of those things they used to keep, not quite as rare, anywhere near as rare as hitting the red seats in the old Riverfront Synergy Field. I think it's only been done somewhere around 60 times since the park is open. And of course, last night was the 600th game played here at Great American Ballpark since it opened in 03. Andres Torres fly to center, leading off the game, and rips one by Joey Votto into right field with one out. And you have to keep an eye on the speedy Torres, 11 of 13 in stolen base tries. Now they're giving this young man some playing time, and he's responded very nicely. He's got speed. He can play all around the different outfield positions. Be interesting to see if they even try to push the running game right here. Slide step used on the first pitch by Harang, and the pitch is low to Freddie Sanchez. Ball one. Sanchez grounded out to Scott Rowland in the first inning. One and one. You know, Aaron Harang for a big guy has gotten a little bit better every year at trying to hold runners. Two years ago, he gave up 17 stolen bases, only four throw them outs. Last year, he cut that down to 13 and five throw them outs. This year, two stolen bases and three times they've thrown them out. Runner goes and a bouncer again to roll it off the bat of Sanchez, and that's out number two. Or is in scoring position for Sandoval. A reminder you can chat with Hall of Fame baseball writer Hal McCoy right now on FoxSportsOhio.com and then get all the recap of the night section after the game. FoxSportsOhio.com presented by 1 800 Safe Auto. Now Kung Fu Panda. Pablo Sandoval. He takes in the dirt ball one. Of course, I guess if you really want to go out on a limb. You know, Jack Black was the uh, voice of uh, Kung Fu Panda, I'm told. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss. And was also the voice of Nacho Libre. Ah, now you're talking. And a lot of people believe that Corky Miller resembles Nacho Libre. 
So here they are together right next to one another. Wonder, Who would have ever thought? What if Corgi's doing a little voiceover right now? One and one on Sandoval. Here comes a curve. Hand to man. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> it's good stuff, isn't it? Got that boiler working. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yeah. Two and one on Sandoval. Found away. Well, you know, Sandoval, uh, his weight was an issue last year, early in the year. And then once he started hitting, nobody brought it up anymore, yeah. naturally. Yeah, and they only talk about Prince Fielder when he's not hitting. That's right. Amazing how that works. But when they brought him in, before winter ball started, they did want him to get down to about 240 pounds, and he got down to about 245. And then once he went down to winter ball and showed up for spring training, the 14 pounds was put right back on when he arrived in spring training. Three and two on Sandoval. Now Sandoval, a, a very sweet natured young man. And, you know, when asked about it, he'll always have a smile. And like you just said, he said, they don't ask me about it. You guys don't ask me about it when I'm hit. They might ask him about him on that ground out to second base. And the inning is over. Middle of the third, Giants lead by a run. He's a good hitter. He hit 400 in, in college in a very good college uh, division or conference. So we, we feel confident he's a guy that will move quick. And, and uh, uh, we, now we're fortunate because we also have Mike uh, or De Devin uh, Mezzarocca, yeah. who's also uh, 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 going to move quick, moved up to double A. So we've got two solid catchers. And catches are so hard to find and develop. So we're very pleased with that. Man. Our Geico direct quote from Walt Jockety in a pregame show interview today with Jim Day and Jeff Bacoro. One and two on Aaron Harang, breaking ball down around his feet. And that'll even account at two and two. Harang to be followed by Orlando Cabrera, then Brandon Phillips. Reds trailing two to one against Jonathan Sanchez and the Giants here in the third inning. Harang is a batter this season. Five hits and 24 at bats. He's knocked in two runs, has one extra base hit. That was a double.
three straight strikeouts for Sanchez. Got Stubbs and Miller to end the second inning and Harang to begin the third. Well, you go back to the final week of April and take a look at the best records among all National League teams brought to you by Honda. The Dodgers and the Reds running neck and neck. Atlanta has been red hot here of late. They've really come on strong the last two and a half weeks. You see the Cardinals only four games over 500 in a little over a month and a half. There's some missed chances in there by the Reds. Obviously their record is very good, but you know the number of defeats you saw on that screen, they've had a few of those get away from them. But wins nonetheless. Well, the more you look at the National League time, the more you realize that there really isn't one or two teams that seem like they're going to run away with everything. Yeah, everybody thought at the very beginning of the year that the Philadelphia Phillies were the team that beat. They were just so loaded offensively, but their offense went, went very quiet. Their pitching is suspect. Atlanta overtook them. And really, it was, it was the, that quick two games that the Reds were down in Atlanta. They gave up a big lead with a seven inning, nine, uh, ninth inning. Seven run ninth inning, and that kind of propelled the Braves on to some kind of an offensive spurt. You're right. That is a fair ball that ricochets to the right fielder, and Cabrera's going to try to go to second. Here comes the throw, and it's not in time, and Cabrera with a hustling double is a perfect two for two tonight. Well, you love a hitter that can do exactly what Orlando Cabrera can do. First time up, hits a shot to left field for a base hit through the third base and shortstop hole. This time, for the second time in two pitches, tries to go to right. He missed one foul down there. Now he goes right inside the bag, and he hits that little tarp area down there, and he ends up heading down to second base. Well, this guy has just taken to the leadoff spot. He just loves it. I mean, he just... Can't wait to get to the ballpark every day. Now Brandon Phillips. He had an excuse me swing roller back to Sanchez, who threw him out in the first inning, and now an RBI chance for Brandon Phillips. talking about Brandon Phillips and how well he's playing right now. He is fourth in the National League in runs scored. He's third in the league in doubles. Brandon Phillips is third in the league in hits. Oh, and two. And this is the guy that started off horrendously. I mean, in the month of April, he batted 236. Only had a couple of home runs, knocked in nine over the entire month. Picked it up in May, hit 80 points higher in the month of May than he did in April. And he's 50 points higher here in June. I like that, that trend. And you know what I've seen about Brandon? I mean, the first couple of swings we've seen right there, those are big, wild swings. I mean, he's trying to, to match Buster Posey and hit one into the deck up there. But he spreads out a little bit on two strikes now, more of a slasher now. and. See if he can't get that run in. That is a tying run out there at second base. With the Reds down two to one. And a swing and a miss. That pitch fooled Brandon badly. Yeah, that's a pretty good looking breaking ball. That's four strikeouts of the last five batters Sanchez has faced. And now it's up to Joey Votto. Well, he's ahead in the count, and he just buries that breaking ball. That's exactly where you want to throw it. If you're a left-handed pitcher, you want to throw it to the back foot of a right-handed hitter, so that if he if he doesn't get his foot out of there, that baby's going to break enough to come in there and get him on the toe. That's your aim, anyway. You don't want to leave that up over the plate, and he didn't do it that time. Now would be a mighty good time for Joey Votto to get his first hit in this series. 
He was fooled badly on a pitch down and in. And like Phillips bounced out to the pitcher Sanchez. Well, you know, it seems like the teams that have seen Joey Votto enough, and of course, everybody sends advanced scouts around, but that spot right there that you see Sanchez try to hit, that's where they like to throw him. It's a lot easier to get there if you're a left handed pitcher than it is a right handed pitcher. Two and oh. Sanchez's fastball will naturally run into that left handed hitter. And he's got enough juice on it. I mean, he throws it anywhere from 91 to 95. He can get it right in under your thumbs. Well, Lovato's 36 RBIs, seven of those have come with two out in an inning. Or 17 of those, not seven, I beg your pardon. And that's the most among all Reds players. 3 0 down to Votto with rolling on deck. Taking all the way on a 3 0 pitch, and it's a strike on the outside corner. You see right now Jonathan Sanchez all over the map trying to locate a pitch to Joey Votto finally gets a, a 3 0 pitch in there. No guarantee you're getting a cookie down the middle here though. Back up through the middle smothered by Sanchez it'll be an infield hit but that's an excellent effort by Freddie Sanchez. That ball goes into center field it's a tie game. Now we used to call that a belly play back in amateur baseball. In fact, in the middle of the organization, they may still call it that. That's where the infielders know ahead of time with that runner on second base, you dive, knock it down, keep it in the infield, do whatever you can, give up the infield hit, but do not let that ball trickle into the outfield because you're right, Tom, that would mean a run for the Reds, and that's a tying run. So Vito does indeed get his first hit of the series. Runners are on the corners for Scott Rowland, who knocked in the first run of the night for either team with a first inning double to left field. Found off to the first base side out of play. Strike on Scott Rowland, the team leader with 41 runs batted in. And a real good chance to add to that total right here and right now. Good pitch by Sanchez on the inside edge. Count with Cabrera at third, the tying run. The lead run is Joey Votto at first, one and two, and here it comes. Fastball up and in. Cabrera with a one out double goes to third on a two out infield hit by Votto. And now the break even pitch to Scott Rowland at two and two. Breaking ball low and in. Good eye by Rowland. So now Votto gets started at first. Cozy going to take a look at his pitcher and make sure he knows that he's playing behind Votto over there. 
really like the way the Reds hitters are working Jonathan Sanchez tonight a lot harder than they worked Matt Kane last night. Kane was real efficient through the first eight. It's the only reason he was out there to complete it. Two to Scott Rowland. Sanchez stands tall on the mound and a payoff pitch is ball four to load him up for Johnny Gomes. Good numbers in these situations for Johnny Gomes. They don't get much better than that. Wow. They are loaded with two away. And a breaking ball and a first pitch to Gomes is high. Ball one. And walk to roll in the first of the night, given up by Sanchez. Reds down a run. And Johnny Gomes tugging on that helmet. Two and up. If they ever have a Johnny Gomes bobblehead night, pretty safe to say they ought to have that hand up on the bill of that helmet. Well, really, what they ought to do is have the head secured to the body and then the bobble part be in the helmet. He's always working that thing hard. There he goes. He might leave the ground swinging at this one. <laughs> You're right. Two and oh to Johnny, and here it comes. High and away, ball three. A pretty safe bet here. He will not get a green light three and oh. Sanchez having walked the prior batter, missing on three in a row to Gomes to start this at bat. But I guess you never know. Three and one. We had yeah, like to have another one of those. Orlando Cabrera leads at third. Joey Votto the same at second. Scott Rowland the same at first. Three balls and a strike to Johnny Gomes. And it's a tie game on ball four. Uh, he was on his coach Dave Rigetti to the mat. Sorry about that, Tom, but you know, it seemed like Jonathan Sanchez on a strikeout string there for a while had struck out, you know, four or five, three in a row, got down to the bottom of the order. And, and when Bottle got that little base hit, he did not look like he really wanted to challenge Scott Rowland. He got behind in the count by throwing breaking balls to Johnny Gomes. And now Dave Rigetti, who was a very fine left handed flamethrower in his time, Comes out there to try to give his young left hander a little bit of advice. Which is probably trust your fastball, young man. This is what's got you here. Jay Bruce hit the ball very hard his first time up. Unfortunately for him, it was right at the first baseman Buster Posey. But Chris, you always said this young man was going to start hitting left-handed pitching. Yeah, I like the way he's choking up just a little bit, giving him a little, giving himself a little more back control. 
And that's the key to Jay Bruce now as opposed to earlier, whether you're talking about earlier in the season or last year or the year before. He used to chase that pitch all the time because he was so anxious. Bases loaded for Bruce in the 1 0. Nowhere near the strike zone. Another breaking ball from Sanchez. Go figure. Center field hit pretty well. Going back to the wall is Burrow, and what a nice play he makes in front of the wall. A guy who's virtually played no defense for three years, and that's about his second or third real nice play in the first three games of this series. None bigger than that one. Toyota dealers where you can register to win the Tundra Great American Ballpark by JTM Food Family Fun JTM by Geico 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO and by GMC we are professional grade now look at the main concourse just behind the plate here at Great American Ballpark on what has turned out to be a beautiful night. A lot, a lot of gray skies and a lot of rain overnight. Gray skies and light rain on again, off again all day today, but as predicted, right around 5 36 o'clock, it would peel out of here, and that it has. In the air off the bat of Aubrey Huff, and it's caught by Brandon Phillips in a 2 2 game to open the fourth inning. There's the first down. Our at and trivia question for tonight. Since 1960, what two players started their careers with the Reds and then ended their careers with the Giants? Give a little while to think about that. You rebay in the air to Jay Bruce, and just like that, two quick outs in the Giant fourth. Well, the Giants will swing the bats. We've seen that the entire series. If you come out throwing strikes early, they'll hack. Especially this part of the order. Huff and Uribe, they don't sit around and wait. As a team, the Giants have taken just 175 walks in 57 games. That's the second fewest in the league. But in their last four games alone, they have walked 18 times. Go figure that one. That's two games against the Pirates in the first two games of this series uh, against the Reds. Reds pitching on seven last night. Only two in the first game. That's because the Giants had 13 hits. 
And Aaron Harang's only walk tonight was followed by a home run. And this is a man he walked, Pat Burr. In and out of the middle, Corky Miller. It's two and two on Pat Burrow. Well, back in the prime of his career, yes, Burrow would strike out a lot, but man, he was a feared slugger in the middle of those Philadelphia Philly lineups. From 2000 to 2008, that's nine years. He hit at least 30 or more home runs in four of the nine and knocked in 80 or more runs in seven of the nine campaigns. Now the 2 2 pitch. Ball three to Pat Burr. Trying to pitch bat, Pat Burrell down, 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 and down and away, as you can see. He loves to cover that part of the zone against left handers, Burrell does. Looking for a slider right here, and he doesn't get it. Mm. Walks twice. How about that? Two walks in the game now for Aaron. And here's Posey, who followed the walk with two outs to Burrell in the second inning. And hit the fifth home run this season into the second deck out and left, and the 77th home run since Great American Ballpark opened in that second deck. Well, they hit a first pitch breaking ball that time, and that this particular at bat, Harang starts him off with a heater. Right, one of that call, and Gary Darling didn't give it to him. And he's just off the corner. What he has not done tonight is pitch inside very much, and that's understandable in this ballpark. You just kind of get the yips. He goes inside that time, and maybe try to straighten Posey up a little bit. This was a long home run by Posey back in the second inning. Are you talking about a curveball breaking into your wheelhouse? Nice young man. Got to talk to him a little bit over the last couple of days. Pretty good looking hitter, I'll tell you that. Better believe it. Well, he's been their number one ranked prospect for quite some time. Well, he was drafted, uh, I think, number one in 2008. So they got him here to the big leagues in a hurry. Well, they're expecting huge things out of Posey. That was his first major league home run. He came up last year for seven games. And this will be a major league fly ball to right, which will retire the side. So a two out walk to Burl, no damage done. Reds will bat in the fourth in a 2 2 game.
presented by the Ohio Department of Public Safety. All right, now listen up. If you go to FoxSportsOhio.com right now and you enter the keyword slider, slider, you have a chance to win a cater party for 20 from Curly's Barbecue, a 50-inch high-definition television, and a $500 gas card. Now, Chris, that is a red, white, and blue barbecue supreme. What, what do you have to do? You enter slider? Slider. That's a great contest there. Oh, man. I mean, you fire up that big screen, bring in the barbecue, fill up your car with gas a number of times. You might be able to fill your car up twice with that. Maybe. Diesel, baby. One and two on Drew Stubbs. That's an armor tank. <laughs> Down and in, two and two to Stubbs. Pitch on the way from Sanchez and a breaking ball in this. Fielded by Sanchez, turns, throws, and it pulls the first baseman Posey off the back. Well, that was the only chance they would have to get stuffed. Not even sure a good throw would have had it, but if the third baseman has to field it, forget about it. Well, Drew Stubbs just runs so well. And coming from the right side of the batter's box, where you have one more step from the lefty, he gets down the line as well as anybody in the league. It is impossible for me to believe that there is a faster player in the league than Stubbs. I'm not saying that he is the fastest, yeah. but it's impossible to believe. Oh, in terms of just a foot race, and anybody pure speed-wise is faster than that guy. You agree? Yeah, we talked about that in Washington because they've got a couple of real speedsters there, yeah. Niger Morgan and Roger Bernardino. And uh, we were kind of posing the question back and forth to, to Rob Dibble and Bob Carpenter, their announcers, and we concluded that we need to race because we like our guy and they like their guys. That is already the 10th infield hit this year for Drew Stubbs. Boy, if he could hone that skill of bunting a little bit. Now, he's a guy that can hit the ball in the seat, so not like a Brett Butler a kind of center fielder. A leadoff man, which Stubbs might become again in his career. Stubbs has a lot more power. Yeah, but you still like to be able to add that weapon to your arsenal. And he does bunt, and he's a pretty accomplished bunter. But where he does not bunt is that push bunt to the right side. The one that we used to see Norris Hopper do so effectively. And if he could get that down, I mean, he'd be a 300 hitter every year. All you need to do is drop about 10 bunts a year, and you're, you're, you're there. I mean, the difference between a 250 hitter and a 300 hitter is two hits a week. And with his speed, he'd make a lot of second basemen nervous about playing deep. 2 and 0 out of Corky Miller in a 2 2 game. There goes Stubbs, and that ball is hit hard in the right field, but Huff will get to it at the track. The Reds trying to play a little hit and run right there, and Corky just lifted it in the air. Now let's answer our AT&T trivia question. The only two players since 1960 to begin their careers as a Cincinnati Red and end it as a San Francisco Giant. Eric Davis and Mike Lacoste. I forgot Eric Davis wrapped up his career as a yeah. Giant. I knew Lacoste did. Well, he spent a lot of years with the Giants after leaving the Reds, Mike Lacoste. For those who don't remember him, he was about to uh, uh, throw down a second base on the butt attempt, and this will be a double play to any end. So that takes care of that. We go to the fifth in a 2-2 game.
blast. The first major league home run of his career, August the 20th, 2009, for Drew Stubbs, a game winner on Bobby Howry. Now that's a way to get your first career home run, isn't it? Two runs, two hits for the Giants. They've left two men on base. Two runs, five hits, four left for the Reds. And here in the fifth inning, it'll be eight, nine, and one in the Giant batting order. Eli Whiteside, Jonathan Sanchez, Andres Torres against Aaron Harang. Now the pitches after four innings between last time out for Aaron Harang. That was in Washington. He struggled mightily in that ball game. He only gave up two runs in those four innings, but he he was just so beat after four innings of 98 pitches they hauled him out of there. But he is so much more efficient tonight. Destined to go deep into a ball game when you're that efficient. Play one ball and two strikes. This is the part of the order, really, in the National League, though, that you want to get in and out of the inning just as quickly as you possibly can. You're not taking anything away from Eli Whiteside. 280 hitter with four home runs, but Corky wants to go up the ladder right here. Well, this should be the first out of the inning. Stubbs in to get it, and it is. You know, we're seeing Aaron Harang do that a lot more over his last few starts. It seemed to me like in the month of April, Aaron Harang almost wanted to be a sinker ball pitcher. He kept pitching down in the zone with two seamers, and that ball would run off the plate side to side, but really wouldn't turn over because his delivery is so pure and he gets behind the ball, he has a hard time making it sink. Whereas other guys like Mike Leak, it sinks naturally for him. So he's more of an up and down north and south pitcher and he can throw that fastball up there because it really doesn't sink and hitters never get on top of it or nearly never get on top of it. Longer delivery that time, longer stride for Aaron Harang. I like to see that same shot in slow mo from, say, around the third base camera where you can see him really extend himself towards home. I mean, he's 6'7. You got to get way out over his front leg and be close to home plate when he releases it. Check swing and a miss. And that's strike three to Sanchez. First strikeout tonight for Aaron Harang in the first two at time. Here's the shot we were looking for, staying back over the rubber with his back leg. And at 6'7, that's a pretty good stride. Not as long as he could probably do it, but as long as he feels comfortable doing it. And it's about a foot longer than it was last year. Now Andres Torres with two down and nobody on. And it's a ball and a strike to the Giants center fielder. Ground ball to Joey Votto. He will feed Harang in time to end the inning. So he did what you suggested, Chris Welsh, took care of business there in the fifth.
2,000 fans in attendance. Receive a bobblehead of the Reds third baseman Scotty Rowland thanks to Kroger. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS or go to Reds.com. A look into the Commonwealth. Some of the boaters out. Maybe thinking earlier today they wouldn't be able to do that tonight. Ah, but it's turned into a beautiful night. And the Reds and the Giants in game three of this four-game series nodded at two. And the top of the order for the Reds. A perfect night for Cabrera. A single, a double, has scored both runs. One and one to Orlando. Count even on Cabrera two and two. Brandon Phillips two up next, and Joey Votto. And trio trying to break this two two tie. And that's jerk foul. Again, the two two pitch coming. And a flare in the center field, and that'll fall and roll by the center fielder, Torres. Cabrera on his way to second base, and he'll stop right there with his third hit tonight and his second double of the night. Well, Orlando Cabrera has done his part to get this offense going tonight. He's been on base every time. He scored both of the Reds' runs, and he does it again to get the inning going. Do or die play for Andres Torres. He comes in to try to shoestring that ball, but you know when you come in to do that, you've got to kind of get your body in front of it. You can't just play it off to the side for the reason that happens right here when he doesn't get there and the ball goes underneath his glove. So he gambles, loses. The Reds pick up a runner in scoring position. Now Brandon Phillips would like to get him over to third. Brandon taking a look around the Giants wondering if Phillips would be asked to sacrifice here their first baseman Buster Posey about a step in front of the bag at first and the ball even with a bag on the other corner at third and that one's in the air so left field you got to believe Cabrera's tagging here and no he does not as Burrell makes the throw to the cutoff man thought for a moment that Cabrera might give it a try. So Phillips with an out and fails to advance a runner. Yeah, that's not really a great out for, for Brandon Phillips. I mean, as hot as he is, he probably saw a pitch there that he thought he could drive and hit real hard somewhere. Just got underneath it a little bit. But it would be, oh, so much easier for Joey Votto to drive that runner in from third. Roboto coming off his first hit in the series. It looked like he would knock in a run on a ground ball back up through the middle. But Freddy Sanchez dove on top of it just before it trickled into the outfield grass, stopping Cabrera, the runner then at third base. Cabrera wound up scoring when Sanchez walked the next two hitters, Rowan and Gomes, in the third inning to tie the game at two. a fly ball that would have knocked in the go ahead run. Instead it's a second out and after a leadoff double by Cabrera he's still standing there. Hey Reds fans JTM wants to know how you 32 grab a bag of JTM's new 32 count burgers and visit how do you 32.com for more details. JTM food family fun. Nicely done. You had a few problems with that last night. I did. I worked on it. 
I think I've got it down now. <laughs> Here's Scott Rowland. And it's off the end of the bat, but it's down the line, and that is a foul ball. Goodness gracious. Thought Rowland had another double and another run batted in. He'll need a new bat. Right back in there behind in the count 0 and 1. Sanchez distracted by all the bouncing around Orlando Cabrera is doing out there off the second base bag. And now he'll try and refocus on the batter rolling. He misses 1 and 1. Driven home in a deep right center field, and that is going all the way up against the wall. It is another RBI double for Scott Rowland, his second tonight. Now 42 runs batted in for Rowland, and this one gives the Reds a 3 to 2 lead. It's like somebody took the personal health clock of Scott Rowland and unwound it 10 years because he is swinging the bat like a young man. Waiting back, seeing it on the outer part of the plate and just driving it big time. That is the biggest difference between Scott Rowland this year and what we saw of him when he came over last year. Man, oh man, nothing sweeter than a two out ribeye. Man, what a year he's having indeed. What a year. I mean, after two months, he's back among the elite again. Now, granted, it is two months. He is a little longer in the tooth than a lot of guys that are playing regularly, playing every day in Major League Baseball. Dusty's done a nice job spotting him time to time. Yep. He's having fun. So it doesn't seem like work. That's a third time in an identical spot that Johnny Gomes has been hit in the last week. In St. Louis, he got drilled on the left thigh twice, you may remember. And now a week later drilled again. Well that was on the knee. Yeah, I got him on the knee. I mean I don't think he would mind being hit at all where he was earlier which was the upper outer thigh. But when you get around there that's on bone. Mm. Put your hand down there right now and feel the outside of your leg. There is a lot of bone down there around your knee. Ouch. You know they're doing they're doing their damage tonight against a guy who was pitched against the Reds two times in his career. Hasn't pitched since 2008 against him, but the last time he did, I mean, he throttled the Reds. Gave up four hits, struck out ten. In fact, they, are no, they don't give up very many hits at all. Jonathan Sanchez gives up an average of a 183 against him. The Giants are first in the league as a team in lowest opponent batting average. But the Reds, as you know, they lead the National League and hitting with 276, and they picked up seven hits tonight. Jay Bruce, another guy who's hit the ball very hard twice tonight. A rocket one hopper at Buster Posey, in and that drive to left center field on a leaping catch made by Pat Burl in front of the wall, leaving the bases loaded. But this time, a routine ground ball to Sanchez. But the Reds break the 2 2 tie on a two out run scoring double from Scotty Rowland. 3 2 Reds at the end of five.
Jim Day back with you. It's time now for our Meyer text poll question of the night. The Giants in town. And we'd like to know who is your favorite Giants slugger of all time? Is it one, Willie Mays, the Say Hey Kid, two, Barry Bonds, text three for Mel Ott, or four for Willie McCovey? 37664 is where you text your votes to, 37664. And as we send it to the booth, a guy that was just on the big screen, Peter Edward Rose, played oh, yeah. against probably all these, well, not Barry Bonds, but certainly McCovey, Willie Mays. Big ovation for Peter Edward down there. As there should be. I mean, everybody's springing for, from their seats. And Pete just pointed to the sea for his beloved Cincinnati Reds. That one popped up into foul ground, and Joey Votto runs out of room. This is a very important inning now for Aaron Harang. So you talked about Chris the last inning, eight, nine, and one, and how you want to get through that. Low pitch count, no damage. That he did. Here in the sixth, two, three, and four in the batting order. Sanchez Sandoval and then Aubrey Huff. And it's pulled into left field. Johnny Gomes will run it down shy of the track. Good play by Johnny. Well, it's also a big inning because it's a momentum grabber. You grab the lead in this inning, you want to thump them right there and say, all right, let's get Sanchez right back out there. And Harang has done his part, got ahead of Sanchez there, 0 2. Got a breaking ball that he flies out to Johnny Gomes, who's playing a pretty doggone good left field defensively this year. Mm -hmm. Well, here you see the Meyer text poll results so far. Willie Mays in a landslide. Tell you what, I don't know what the guy did, if he did anything at all. I wasn't old enough to see Barry Bonds, I mean, uh, Willie Mays, but I'll tell you one thing, brother. Having a chance to broadcast inside that National League West for 10 years. Good play by Roland to throw out Sandoval. And uh, watching the Giants play probably about 25 times a year on average. I have never seen, and I don't know if I ever will see, another guy who had a 10-year run like Barry Bonds. He that guy had, was sick. He pretty much had the baseball swing perfected, did he not? I mean, I mean guy was amazing. I mean, he'd be in, Joe Morgan will tell stories. He's seen him, of course. But, I mean, you go in to play him. You play him in a three-game series. Say he got 12 plate appearances. He'd be intentionally walked six times, and that's not an exaggeration. He was getting walked over 200 times a year. And he might get one pitch to hit every game and would seemingly never miss it. Now, I'm not suggesting he hit a home run every time, but he would hit a missile somewhere seemingly every time he took a rip for a decade. That was unbelievable. And again, that's not getting into the whole debate about what he did do or what he didn't do. But he could match. And the last time I checked whether people want to agree with it, disagree with it, get upset about it, like it, love it, doesn't matter. He is still baseball's all-time home run leader. Best player I ever saw. No doubt. That ball hammered down the right field line. Jay Bruce will fire back into Brandon Phillips after a two-out double from Aubrey Huff. Boy, Aubrey Huff has been real quiet in this series so far. He's picked up a hit, a couple of walks, but that's the hardest ball he has hit. Looked like a changeup that Harang threw. Caught a lot of the plate, and he rips it down the right field line. Well, now you have a base open. Granted, you have another right-handed batter coming up behind Uribe in Pat Burrow. But Uribe has been their best RBI hitter. He's driven in 38 runs this season. But tonight is 0 for 2. Found out of play. Well, Joe Morgan has been uh, very, very close friends with Pete Rose. Obviously, not only when they were teammates together, but low these many years. 
They have stayed extremely close. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And a bouncer foul. Two on your rebate, and it misses away. Tying one out there is Huff at second base after a two out double here in the sixth inning. Morang trying to strand him right there, and does on a swing and a miss by your rebate. Good break the ball, real good. Harang is only allowed three hits. Middle to six, the Reds with a 3 2 lead. Coors Light freeze cam. Eli Whiteside nearly popped out of there, but he squeezes it tightly in snow cone fashion. Yes, indeed, Eli, you've got it. And that was the Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. The night is over for Jonathan Sanchez. He'll give way to Sergio Romo. We saw Romo. In the opening game of this series, in fact, he picked up his second win of the year in the series opening. And yeah, he did it with one inning of work, too. He came in in the sixth inning, struck out Cabrera, got Brandon Phillips, and then hit Joey Votto. He was lifted from the ball game and ended up picking up the win in that game. Drew Stubbs on the very first pitch from Romo, drives one deep to straightaway center field. Goodbye. Seven for Drew Stubbs, and it's a two-run lead. Uh, Drew Stubbs, you were talking about his power time, and he gets a ball up right there, and boy, you just let it fly in this ballpark. Looked like a cutter or a breaking ball that he just fired up in the upper end of the zone, and you don't do that here. One to Corky Miller, who struck out looking and lined out to right.
into center field and caught out there by Torres and Porky's got to wonder what do I got to do to get a hit. Lined out to right now line drive he hit right on the screws to center. And he hit that so much on the screws that you see the tumbling catch by Andres Torres. I think that ball was knuckling as it came out there as hard as that ball was hit. It looked like Torres did not negotiate that very easy. Look at that ball move. You can see some movement on that at the very end. You hit it hard enough, it's a 115 mile an hour knuckleball. So one away, and now Aaron Harang, the batter. Harang has thrown a very nice game so far here tonight through six innings. Swung on and fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes on Harang. Orlando Cabrera on deck. Drew Stubbs a home run to begin this home half of the sixth inning. And now Harang with a two-run cushion. He was given a one-nothing lead after the first inning of this one. Then gave up a two-run home run to Posey the very next half inning. The Reds tied the game in the third on a bases loaded walk to Johnny Gomes. Scott Rowland broke the tie in the fifth with a Two out RBI double and now the home run by Drew here in the sixth. Two outs. We'll take your family out for some fun this coming Sunday. It's the next Meyer Family Day. And don't forget when one family member buys a full price ticket, the entire family gets non-premium tickets half price. Call 513-381-RED-S or go to reds.com slash family. And again, we always remind you that offer valid in advance of game day only. Like to send out a big hello to a great Reds fan. 92 years young is Mr. Herb Corson, a prisoner of war. Lives in Dayton, Ohio. That ball hit down the left field line by Cabrera, and it's up against the wall. It'll be a fourth hit and a third double for Orlando Cabrera. What a night for Orlando. He's also scored three runs. Now they are dancing in the streets of Cartagena tonight watching this ball game. He's been all over the place. He's hit a double down the right field line. He's hit a double to dead center field. He says, hey, I haven't hit one on the left yet. I'll hit it this time. That ties a career high four hits in a game for Orlando Cabrera. Twelfth time he's had four hits in a game. Just want to finish that hello to Herb Corson up in Dayton. His wife of 62 years, Janice, watches every game with him. She is 84 years young. And they're watching the Reds tonight. Proud parents of three children. They watch the Reds, Chris, every single night. Herb would love to come to a game, but it's a little bit tough right now for him at 92. But Herb. We send out a big hello and thanks so much for watching and hope you're doing well. Yeah, Herb. Congratulations. And thanks for your service. Absolutely. POW. He knows all about red, white, and blue. And Brandon Phillips on the base hit in the left field. They get a wave around Cabrera. Here comes the throw to the plate, the slide. No slide. He went dancing over top of it. But he was tagged out on the way by. 
Cabrera can't believe he was tagged. The home plate umpire, Gary Darling, says he tagged you on the foot. I'm not sure, sure Cabrera's buying it. But he is called out, and Dusty Baker will again argue with Gary Darling. We'll take another look when we come back, a 4-2 game. Burrow. Did Eli Whiteside tag him or not? That shows he does not. Misses the foot. Gary Darling and really the only spot he can be in is home plate umpire right there. Tries to get the best angle. Said he tagged him on the foot, which he does not do right there, as you can see. Orlando Cabrera reacted like, hey, I didn't feel anything. Well, it's a two-run lead as we begin the seventh and on the first pitch of the inning. Pat Burrell swings a bat after having been walked twice already in the game and grounds out to Scott Rowland. But what an excellent game Aaron Harang is pitching here tonight. I mean, this was the Aaron Harang we saw up until two years ago on a pretty regular basis. Well, you know, what I've noticed about Aaron Harang tonight is that he's changing speeds on his breaking ball a lot more. He's had one strikeout on his real slow curveball, and he's also using a slider. There was a time there that he was kind of sinking, trying to sink the ball and throwing slider and mixing the changeup, but there was a lot of variation between the speeds on his breaking ball. I think that's always one of the, the things that pitchers strive for. I know that was always one thing that Robin Roberts always said. Through first pitch strikes, have two speeds on your breaking ball and get a decision on a 2 2 count. Off the end of the bat, dumped into center field by Posey. And he's aboard with one out in tonight's game on Fox Sports Ohio, being brought to you in part by ATT. Find out what's possible with the fastest 3G network. ATT rethink possible by your Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky Honda dealers. Visit my Cincinnati Honda dealer.com and by Granger. With over 900,000 products for the ones who get it done. Along the banks of the Ohio, one on, one out. We're in the Giants' seventh inning. And the Reds with a two run lead. The tying run comes to the plate. Eli Whiteside digging in. And off the glove of Harang, but oh, a bad hop over the glove of Orlando Cabrera. And you almost wonder if the deflection. Caused that spin on the ball, which maybe gave it a little top spin there, whether it just hit the dirt and took a bad bounce. Well, as a pitcher, you want to grab everything that comes in there. It did tick off the glove, and I think it just it may have taken a little bit higher hop than Orlando Cabrera had thought, but it's certainly catchable ball right there. It looks like he was kind of bringing his glove in a little too soon. And a hit or an error. Travis Ishikawa will come up and bat now for Sergio Romo. Romo went one inning, allowed three hits in a run. Fortunate not to give up more than that on the call at home plate. 
And now all of a sudden, after talking about how well things were going for Aaron Harang, a single in the center field off the end of the bat, a bouncer that ricochets off his glove, takes a bad hop on his shortstop behind him, trying to turn a double play. And all of a sudden, the tying run is on, and the lead run comes to the plate with one out. He's been efficient tonight. Only 98 of them here in the seventh inning. Ishikawa off the Giants bench. A 259 hitter with a home run and two batted in. Down a strike. See the only home run for a Chicago this year, a pinch hit home run. Strike two. Pitch in the dirt gets away from Miller, and now all of a sudden the tying run is standing in scoring position. That'll be a wild pitch on Aaron Harang. Not much Corky could do about that. He moved his body out there as best he could. It just took a, a wild hop. We've talked about that before. And he hit right the corner of the plate. You see, you combine that with the spin of that breaking ball, you, there's no way you know where that ball is going to go. Well, now the Giants are a base hit away from tying this game. Another breaking ball again in the dirt, smothered by Miller. Two and two on Travis Ishikawa. Been a very reliable pinch hitter, numbers wise, the best so far in the National League is in Chicago. Strike three called on the inside corner. He didn't like it. Strikeout number three in the game for Aaron Harang. Just a gutsy pitch by Aaron Harang right here. After a couple of breaking balls, he freezes the left handed hitter on that one. All right, now one more out to go. It's Andres Torres. One for three is fly to center, single to right, and grounded out to Votto at first. Reds four, Giants two, we're in the seventh. Ball one. Reds have action in their bullpen for the first time tonight. Logan Andrusik, the big tall right-hander. Daniel Ray Herrera, the south pole. One no delivery on the outside corner. Got to wonder if Dusty would go again to Arthur Rhodes tonight. He's pitched the first two games of this series and come into both games with his team behind. And now with the Reds ahead, you got to wonder if Rhodes is going to be there to try and protect the lead. One and two. Well, it sure does not look like Aaron Harang is losing anything. That fastball in 93 is just about as hard as he's thrown any of them on the night. Pitching good, aggressive baseball here with a couple of runners on. That's what you like to see. One ball, two strike pitches on the way. And a breaking ball that Torres doesn't chase. It's two balls and two strikes with two on and two out in a two run game.
And the bases are now loaded. Now, it didn't look like he wanted to give in right there to Andres Torres. Left-handed hitter. He had him set up for a nice changeup low and away, and he just missed with it. Threw him an inside fastball on the 2-2 pitch. Missed there, went 3-2, and then threw the changeup and buried it in the dirt. Of course, you say that, and now you're forced to face maybe the best pure hitter in their lineup with the bases loaded, although Sanchez tonight is 0 for 3. Uh, no doubt. This guy can flat out hit. Former batting title winner. Well, Harang has been so good in his career. I mean, that is a dynamite average. Opponents batting average against with the bases loaded. And now all of a sudden, after walking only two batters through the front six and two thirds, he got ahead of Andres Torres, a left handed batter, a guy who's bounced around in his career. And then nibbles around with him to go to ball three and ball four to load him up for Sanchez and has fallen behind two and oh. This is a huge pitch coming up in this game right here and right now. The Sanchez is looking for something to hit here two and oh. Ball three. Same thing on two and oh, flies to three and one. Sanchez doesn't even leave the batter's box. Lines it hard into right center field, and Bruce is there to run it down. The Giants leave them loaded. Reds lead 4 2. Time now for the Home Depot doing more on defense. Play of the game. Corky Pillar thought he had his first tip since being brought up. Lines one to left and a diving catch made by Andres Torres. New pitcher on the mound for the Giants, a former Red. Who's found a home out in San Francisco had a great year last year not nearly the success so far this year for Jeremy Affel. Well, he's got a pretty good arm and they really loved what he did 
since being traded out to or actually signed as a free agent out there. Jeremy Affel did after he left the Reds. Hard throwing right hand originally when he came with the Reds he wanted to be a starter. That didn't work out for him but he was a pretty good reliever out of the bullpen. Joey Votto to lead things off. Looks at a breaking ball away. Daniel Ray Herrera continues to throw in the Reds bullpen. Votto taking all the way 2 and 0. And sometimes when you look at the stuff that Jeremy Athel, it's almost like Nick Massett. You wonder how the guy gets hit. Got a great fastball, a hammer of a breaking ball. But he's had control problems this year, and that's been the problem. He's pitched 17 innings and he's walked 13 batters. So every time you turn around, you combine that with the number of hits he's given up, which is 18. He's pitching out of the stretch all the time and for a reason. Well, it's really been a story for Affeld's career. A lot of people thought he was going to be a great pitcher when he first came to the major leagues, just based on what you just mentioned, Chris Stuff. But, I mean, control has been the number one issue in his entire career. He's had a good career. And he walks a left handed batter, which, of course, he's brought into face and try to get out. We remind you to come on down to Fat Cats on Friday at 6 o'clock. Your chance to test your Reds knowledge. And who knows, you might end up on Reds Live after the game on Fox Sports Ohio. Be part of the fun at Fat Cats. Be like Chris Welsh and be a fat cat. Oh, yeah. Come a lot of things. That's not one of them. <laughs> Like one is Scott Rowland. Oh no, you are indeed a fat cat. <laughs> There's no debate about it. One and one to Rowland, who's been right in the middle of everything yet again tonight. An RBI double to left field in the first inning. He walked in the third and then broke the tie with an RBI double to right center in the fifth. Drew Stubbs homer to make it a two run spread and that's where we stand here in the seventh. And rolling down the right field line and it'll fall in a base hit. Votto read it beautifully all the way and he'll advance first to third. Had a hard time centering up the ball at all last night. Tonight they've had 10 hits fall in for him. This one, a little flare job with some little slice on it, gets right in front of Aubrey Huff out in right field. Huffs are kind of a long and circuitous route towards that ball. I mean, with the way this Giants roster is aligned, Bruce Bochy's got guys playing in positions that they're not normally used to playing a whole lot. Trying to find some offense. Reds can tack on some more right here. In the dirt that pitch nearly hit Johnny Gomes, who was hit on the left knee his last time up. It is a wild pitch which advances rolling on a second base. I want to send out birthday wishes to a guy that never misses a game. 90 years young tonight, out in Claremont County, George Bowles. George, happy birthday to you. You're Daughter Georgia Anderson wishes you a happy birthday. And she says no matter what they're doing, he's got the Reds game going on. Nice. Happy birthday indeed. See if Johnny Gomes can't give him a nice birthday present with a big three run big fly right now. That would work. What do you think about that? To blow out those candles. Denny Bautista oh, throwing right hander cranking it up in the giant bullpen 
And Johnny Gomes, there's a birthday present for you, George. This will be a two-run double to right field. How about Johnny? And that makes it a 6-2 Reds lead here in the seventh inning. I remember one thing Kevin Mitchell said when he was a Red, never try to pull a high pitch. And Johnny goes prescribes to that particular hitting theory, slashing it down the right field line, all the way down to the corner, scores a couple of runners, ends up on second base. And the Reds are attacking some on here. Four run lead now to seven. Gomes now with 30, or make that 40 RBIs. He had that bases loaded walk, I forgot, back in the third inning. So three of them tonight for Gomes. So now two Reds with 40 or more runs batted in. That one's butted straight up into the air by Jay Bruce. Jay trying to get that runner down to third. And that'll be Drew Stone. Boy, opposite field hits tonight have been so big for the Reds. A big opposite field double by uh, Scott Rowland off the wall in right center field. That opposite field double by Johnny Gomes. Rowland hit another base hit in this inning, opposite field. Those are the kind of hits that make your batting coach awfully happy. Stubbs a batter. And a breaking ball in there, strike. Well, you take a look down there in the front row. One of our good friends, radio talk show host in Columbus, Ohio, Kirk Herb Street. He and his wife enjoying the game. Look at those four boys. I mean, are they a spitting image of their old man sitting down there? Their family just huge Reds fans. I mean, Kirk up on his radio show in Columbus is talking about the Reds all the time, whether they're Having a real good year and not a good year. Former team captain, as was his father, for Ohio State University football. Found back out of play by Stubbs. Kids are eating like Buckeye linebackers, aren't they? Well, I'm sure that they have a grand plan for all four to be exact. One the quarterback, one the safety, one an inside linebacker, and another a wide receiver. By the family meal plan. What's well, amazing, you know, when you think about it, your dad, a team captain on their football team, yeah. and then the son the same. Oh, that's quite an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Pepper Johnson, uh, the same thing. He and his son. And there's one more, and I'm forgetting it, doggone it. I think they've only had three father son captains in the history of the Buckeye program. Two and two to count on Bruce Stubb. And he's out of there on strike, second out of the inning. Uh, we saw Gene Bennett and Barry Larkin during draft night. Want to wish all the teams who are going to be playing out in the Gene Bennett Baseball Classic out of Wheelersburg, Ohio. Good luck this weekend. They're playing at Branch Ricky Park. Wow. A couple See. big names there. Well, you're not kidding about that. And they're huge out there. Of course, you go to that uh, dinner during the wintertime they have. Yeah, we'd love to get you out there if you've ever. I wanted to go last year. Schedule. There's Corky Miller, and he takes down an in ball one. Pitcher spot due up next, and Chris Heisey is already in the on deck circle. Aaron Harang up over 110 pitches in the game and had to escape that bases loaded jam in the top of his seventh inning. His night is probably over. 
See if Corky Miller can get a hit. He has hit two balls so hard tonight. One of them on a line drive to right, and that diving play in center made by Torres. You know, he'd love to get a hit. I think everybody would love to see it happen, but what he's done behind the plate for Aaron Harang tonight, that's why he's in there. Down to Sandoval, hard one hopper, and he'll tag out the runner Johnny Gomes to end the inning. But Johnny, a two run double, and the Reds with a four run lead at the end of seven. hits in the game and uh, you know Aaron Harang as he gives way now to Daniel Ray Herrera you know, Aaron Harang has been a very good pitcher for the Reds for a long long time and clearly the last couple of years uh, he's not been the same guy and he's coming under a lot of heat uh, from both the fans and the press and, well the numbers are what they are coming into the game tonight but I tell you he really stepped up when the Reds needed a big time performance from a starter there's a sharp two hopper down to Votto, and he'll feed Herrera at the back for the first out. Harang goes seven innings, allows only five hits and two runs. And perhaps Aaron saying to a lot of people, hang on a minute now. Oh, we're only 12 starts into this season, now 13 for Aaron Harang, and he's got some good baseball and some good pitching left in him. Through 114 pitches in the game tonight. You know, there's been so much uh, talk, Chris. And I mean, heck, we do it. We're no different than anybody watching the game right now. You know, we're no different in, uh, than the fans or, or even the talk show host. Uh, you know, we don't get paid to, to go on the radio and talk about this topic and don't have a chance on the air to talk to fans. But, you know, you can go to the grocery store, I run down to the drugstore, whatever. I mean, they're asking the same thing. You know, what are they going to do? Harangue, Bailey, Liqueur, 
I mean, that's the talk of this team right sure now. Sure it is. Well, at least they're talking about the team. That's right. And that's what the, you know, as you said, the Giants broadcasters, Mike Kruko and Dwayne Kuyper, said to you the first day, hey, they're talking about these guys in this town, aren't they? Everybody wondering, you know, who's going to go to the bullpen? Uh, is LeCure going to stay here? You heard uh, Jeff and Jim talking to Walt Jockety about that before the game tonight, perhaps, in Reds Alive. And everybody wondering, okay, Homer Bailey's due to come back. Is he going to start on Sunday? Is LeCure going to the bullpen? Is he going to the minor leagues? Is Aaron Harang going to the bullpen? Well, you know, based on what Walt Jockety said tonight, he didn't say anything definitive about a time frame for Edison Volquez, but he is on track. He's throwing the ball probably ahead of schedule. So, memo to whoever is trying to nail down a spot in the rotation, Volquez is on the way up, and he'll be here sometime in July. So, between now and then, you better get it all together. You are 100% accurate about that because somebody's spot will disappear literally overnight. Yeah. Well, you're talking about a guy who won 17 games two years ago and pitched in the All-Star game. Well, Logan Andrusik was up earlier. Daniel Ray Herrera comes in, retires Sandoval, gives up a single to Huff. Daniel Ray will leave. Logan will enter. And we will leave. The Reds lead by four in the eighth with one on and one out. Back in a moment. Barry and Android with MLB.com's at bat 2010. Don't miss a moment all year long. Visit Reds.com to buy. Well, the Reds six runs, 12 hits. They've left eight men on base. The Giants two runs, six hits, no errors. Have stranded six. And now taking on for Daniel Ray Herrera. With one on and one out is Logan Andrusik. He's looked pretty good last couple of nights. Well, he hasn't looked all that bad, I'll tell you that. He pitched last night in the game started by Sam LeCure. In fact, he came in in the seventh inning, first inning that LeCure was out of there. Retired a couple of batters, ended up giving up a double and a walk, and then was bailed out by Arthur Rhodes. The night before that, Andrusik pitched a perfect inning. And on the very first pitch he throws to Juan Uribe, bangs one into left field, and Hold on a minute. It's a four run lead, but all of a sudden the Giants have two on with only one out. Well, I just can't get over how well Juan Uribe hits a pitch that's down around the knees to the ankles. I mean, you talk about a classic low ball hitter. You're looking at one right there in Uribe. And you're afraid to pitch anybody up in this ballpark because of mistakes that just leave the yard so easily. If you're on Drusik, you want to pound the zone anyway. Use that big, tall frame and get a little downward plane going. Well, you hear the term all the time. You try to get a team out of slam range. The Giants are still within slam range, meaning grand slam range. 
And Andrusa can't be fooling around here with Pat Burrell because the guy in the on deck circle has already hit one of the second deck tonight. Burrell has walked twice, scored a run, and grounded out to third base. Two balls and a strike. Double play ball here. They'll have to hurry. There's one, and that's a double play. And Andrusic takes care of things in the eighth inning. Reds bat for what they hope is the last time tonight, leading by four. Uh, the way the bullpen needed a little bit of a break, Aaron Harang went deep into the game, gave him seven innings of two run baseball. Struck out just three, walked three, but overall it picks a doggone good ball game. In fact, his number of ground balls were up tonight. I think he changing speeds on that breaking ball has really helped himself. And he's in line to pick up a W. So Jeremy Affel will stay in the game for his second inning of work. He gave up two runs. After a leadoff walk to Joey Votto in the seventh inning. Chris Heisey batting for Logan Andrusic. Logan gave up a hit but then got that double play off the bat of Pat Burrell. To end the top of this eighth inning. Two to Chris Heisey. Orlando Cabrera next, and then Brandon Phillips. Again, a reminder no television tomorrow, the final game of this series. And again, we remind you if you haven't seen Mike Leak, why not come on down to the ballpark for a 12 35 game? Leak trying to run his record to 6 0 with a win tomorrow. Todd Wellemeyer, whom the Reds have seen so many times through the year. Both with the Cubs and the Cardinals is scheduled to start for the Giants. In the air down the right field line by Heisey and that is a foul ball. There was talk before this series began that Wellemeyer would not be starting the game tomorrow. 
Now, he has been the one guy that has struggled, really the only guy that has struggled uh, pretty consistently as part of that giant starting rotation, which is very, very good, and we've seen it already in this series. But apparently, he is still going to make the start unless, you know, they have a move in the... Uh, uh, in the offing that you know maybe they brought somebody in here today and they haven't told anybody about it yet. Lined in the shallow center caught by Torres. And I did not hear anything just before the game today. Chris did you hear anything about it. I did not I actually inquired about it and he's still on the list to start on on tomorrow. Wallemeyer with an earned run average just south of six. So the Reds with a they can hold on tonight and then get a typical game as they have seen so often out of Mike Leak. They'll try to even up the series of two games apiece. But the way the Giants have run through the National League Central Division, just amazing. It is. They are 6-0 and against the Astros, 5-1 and against the Pittsburgh Pirates, 2-1 and right now against the Reds. I think 2-1 and against the, the Cardinals as well. Yeah, they have the best record of any team in baseball against any other division in baseball. They only have three losses the entire year against the National League Central coming into play tonight. It's not like they haven't been on the, the National League Central Division schedule so far. 14 and 3. Yeah. Fly ball shallow right. And Cabrera retired for the first time tonight. He was going for a career high fifth hit in a game. Well, this week, Fox Saturday Baseball returns interleague play. The White Sox and the Cubs from Wrigley Field. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Chevrolet at 4 o'clock Eastern time this Saturday. Well, the White Sox have been a huge disappointment so far this year. In fact, you could say that about both teams. In the Windy City, White Sox are nine games under 500, and the Cubs are six games under 500 going into play tonight. Although they lead the Brewers eight to three, that game in the fifth inning. St. Louis in Los Angeles in about a half hour from now, and the Dodgers going for the three-game sweep. They'll send Clayton Kershaw to the mound. Again, Statham Wainwright. Two pretty good pitchers right there. You're right about that. There'll be some heat in the batter's box this evening in, in L.A. And I think uh, after that game tonight, I believe that is only a three-game series. And then the Cardinals go to Arizona. There's a ground out by Brandon Phillips to end the inning. So the ninth right around the corner. Ladder third, the Giants order. Reds trying to get a win. Bare-handed pickup and threw out 
Uribe in the second inning. Our Morel hot dog play of the game. I'll tell you, you've got to be an athlete to make that play. I'm amazed every time I see it. I mean, to come in there and barehand a ball that's spinning like that, coming off the grass, got a little overspin. He's a player, no doubt. Hey, we want to send out get well wishes. You know, uh, you work with guys seemingly uh, every single day in the summer as Francisco Cordero takes over on the mound. But in Dickie Moss's case, you know, our family goes back with Dick Moss back when he was a primary engineer on the Reds on radio back in the early 1970s, engineering Reds baseball every night. And he's been with us over on the television side low these many years. And out on his farm a couple of days ago had an accident, broke his arm, required surgery to get it fixed. So I know that Dickie and his wife Ruth Ann are back uh, watching the ball game tonight. And Dickie, get well. We can't wait to have you back. Well, you're not kidding, Dickie. We miss you. What a guy. In the hole at short, Cabrera throws. What a play by Cabrera. And rival the John Morrell hot dog play of the game by Brandon Phillips, you just saw a moment ago. We're making a foot long hot dog and give Orlando Cabrera some on this one. Up in the air, pirouetting and a throw to Joey Votto at first base. Nice play. Make it a foot long. Another John Morrell hot dog play of the game right there. Eli Whiteside looks at ball one. Well, the Reds now two outs away. This obviously is not a save chance for Cordero, but you know, Coco just trying to iron out some of the kinks that we've seen here this year. Although, you know, Chris, uh, I don't know about you, but that obviously has been another very hot topic of conversation. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that you maybe can worry about about this Reds team. I don't put Cordero very high on that list to worry about. Do you? No, I do not either. You know, if, if you let radio talk show callers operate a ball club, that clubhouse would look like a Greyhound bus station. They'd have people are go, coming and going every day. So you have to have a little more patience. I mean, he's only blown three saves. He's got 266 to his credit. Got to believe a little bit on the back of the guy's baseball card. He's blown four, 16 to 20. I'm correct myself there. But hey, the last couple of years he has been real good. Yeah, he has. Save 39 last year, 34 the year before that for the Reds. The only thing that has been different about Cordero for my money is he strikes out white side compared to other years, Chris, is uh, he doesn't have quite the control through the first two months this year as the last couple of years. You agree? Well, yeah, you know, he walked 30 batters last year in 66 innings. This year he's thrown 28 innings, so roughly a little bit, almost half. And he's walked 13, though, so he's really on the same pace as far as walks that they just seem to be bigger this year. I think the big one was was the grand slam he gave up down in Atlanta that culminated a huge comeback for the Braves and really sent the Reds out of town with their tails between their legs. Nate Sheerholtz will pinch it. Uh, let me make it clear. This ball club is not going to compete in this division without Cordero saving games. And there's strike one and one to Sheerholtz. Reds and out away from getting a much needed win here tonight. After dropping the front two games of this four game series against the Giants from San Francisco. And one more game to go again, 1235 tomorrow afternoon. Charging is Cabrera and no throw. That'll be an infield hit for Shearholds. And don't forget, if you're coming down tomorrow, the entire weekend or all year, Kroger and the Reds are proud to team up to offer you another really, really great value this season. You can check concession stands throughout the ballpark. They call it the Kroger Meal Deal. 
You get a full-size adult hot dog, a 16-ounce Coke, and during this homestand, a bag of Ritz Munchables, all for just $7. So you can come to the ballpark for a more than affordable price and also get something to eat without damaging that water. Runner goes first to second. They'll let him go. Oh, and two on Torres. And it hurt Street Boys saying one more. We might have to wait on one more. That's an RBI double by Torres to make it a six to three game. It may not be a safe situation, but again, the, the results not where Cordero wants them. A two out, granted, infield hit, but followed by an 0-2 pitch for a double and an RBI. Now, this is the one you like to get back right here. He just gets it up high, and Andres Torres has had a nice series. For a guy that we really did not know much about coming into this series, he's played very well in every position. He's hit the ball hard. Sandoval coming to the plate here in this inning. If he does, that means the tying runs coming to the plate. One and two on Freddie Sanchez. A little late on that fastball right there. One of the rare fastballs that Cordero has thrown inside. He really likes to peck away at the outside corner. And a lot of closers feel the same way. Like he got away with one right there. Sometimes you get away with them so far up and so far in, they become unhittable. One and two to Sanchez. Straw came out, and that's the old ball game. So the Reds celebrate a victory for the first time on a season long 10 game homestand. A 6 3 final. Good win. It was a good win. It was all paced by starting pitching. Aaron Harang came out there and did exactly what he needed, despite giving up a home run in the second inning to Buster Posey towards the bottom of the order. He hung in there and he pitched himself a whale of a ball game, got deep into the game, turned it over to the bullpen. The offense did it. Scott Rowland had a big night with three hits. Orlando Cabrera, three hit night. Dusty Baker and Company, they got the offense rolling again, and they're going to try for one more to even up the series against the Giants tomorrow afternoon. And we'll talk more about that when we come back. Reds win 6-3, our final score. Stay with